Ah, see him a beast when he hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when he hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha, Yeah, me, I'm a G ring, he in the sound like Okay, everybody, fighting at UFC Vegas 75 this coming weekend, June 17th. The man himself, Jimmy the Brick Flick. Jimmy, dude, happy fight week. Haven't seen you since, I think, January. How you feeling? Yeah, since January, man, I'm feeling great, man. Had a great fight camp. Excited for this one, you know. Uh, outside of being at the Apex, I wish, you know, I was fighting some more of a fans, you know, a big fan base anyway. But, hey, it is what it is. But it's time to go get this W, man. Yeah, man, especially coming off of last night, UFC 289. I'm sure you're a little hungry to fight in front of some fans. Well, Most hopefully definitely. hopefully by the end of the year, we make that happen for you. But before we get into this fight camp and this fight, I do want to revisit January real quick because it was a tough loss against Charles Johnson upon your return. I, I just want to ask you, I guess in short, what went wrong in that fight from your perspective? Man, I, I was in my own head too much, man. The long layoff mentally, physically, emotionally went through a lot. Um, maybe I shouldn't have fought so soon, you know, but I had a lot going on and that's what I love to do. And, I, that's what I decided to do and you know and I did it you know so there's no regrets man besides just being in my own head I was I was afraid to push the pace too soon I was afraid that I might gas out first fight back first fight of 2023 you know and just too much in my own head questioning stuff so I mean now that it's off it's gone we've been there time to go back in there same octagon same place again and this time, you know, I need to get the W and uh, fight my fight. Do you feel like you shook off some of those uh, emotions you were feeling, like moving forward for the second chapter of your career? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, like I, I had a lot going on in my head, you know, and the first thing to help get rid of everything was to, you know, get back to fighting and fight as soon as possible, you know, and not the outcome I wanted, but that's what happens in this sport. And now I'm ready to get back in there. And uh, I was staying ready. I told him I'd fight March 25th in San Antonio, Texas. They had three flyweight fighters on there. And I was cutting weight that week. And then uh, that's when they offered me uh, Alessandro Costa for uh, June 17th. And I was like, money, let's go. Well, how do you feel about Alessandro Costa uh, as an opponent? Uh, he's good, man. I mean, he's shorter than most of my opponents, you know, so hopefully I'll be able to use that to my advantage. Uh, good jiu-jitsu. The only guy that I've ever fought that has a flying submission as well. Um, he's got, you know, those bombs in his hands. Uh, fought which is now currently probably the number four flyweight in the world, Al Bazi, on his debut and did really good, man. I mean, he's a solid opponent, good takedown defense, scrambles. I mean, but we're in the UFC. I mean, I'm not really going to get no bums. So uh, it didn't matter, man. It doesn't matter who it is. I think I'm the best, and uh, that's what I got to prove. And I know you're a big submission guy. He's got six career submissions. <laughs> Are you expecting a sort of a grappling affair here? Uh, I mean, I always plan to see how good their grappling is, you know. I mean, but you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I've been working on my striking a lot. Uh and I want to stay long, and I know he throws with a lot of power, and but I like to mix it up and push the fight, you know. So uh, I imagine we're going to hit the floor. And if you're Dana White, you know, making one of his little Twitter videos to sell this fight to the fans, what are you saying? Like, what are you saying about Jimmy the Brick Flick and Alessandro Costa? Well, I'm telling you, Jimmy Flick, it's a killed or be killed. You know, this guy, he's got – three fights inside the octagon and it's, you know, uh, finish or be finished. You know, I come forward. I like to fight, man. I mean, uh, I'd rather go forward and lose than go backwards and fight on the defense and win. My dad always told me that in wrestling, I'd rather you be on the offense and lose than to be on the defense and win. So I'm an offensive guy. I'd rather go forward and lose than go backwards and lose, you know. So uh, I just want to win and I want to fight and I want to make the fans excited, Dana excited. And, uh, I mean, he's got two guys that's hit flying submissions, two Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts that are finishers. And uh, Costa's a beast, you know, and he throws with power. And 
I've always been looking to get my first knockout and I told somebody it's eventually it's going to happen. I'm going to get one. And I saw on Instagram, you're oh, still, no, sorry. We got a little delay, but thanks for, thanks for working with it. Um, and I know you're still training at Forza and Ryan BJJ. Uh, just tell me a little bit about, you said camp was great. Who you've been training with? How's it been going? Yeah, I also do CrossFit three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. I do CrossFit over at CrossFit Sand Springs, and then I do lunch uh, jiu-jitsu and sometimes afternoon jiu-jitsu over at Ryan BJJ with Todd Ryan, Shea Conley. Uh, they got uh, Caleb Baslin. He just, he's about to go pro. He's a 135-er uh, going pro, and they got some good guys over there. And then over at Forza Combat Sport, the list goes on. We got MMA fighters, bare knuckle fighters, Muay Thai champs, uh, Koei, Christian, Jeff, Xander. Uh, we got Kyle Driscoll just came back, picked up a win over in Cage Warriors. Um, freaking uh, LT Nelson, that guy, he fights in bare knuckle, kickboxing. He's the king of Spartan champ twice in a row over in Colorado. Like, we got amazing training partners over there. Got a bunch of little guys for me as well. Uh, Samson Tabby Tight, he's a pro. He's fighting in a kickboxing tournament here in Tulsa. I mean, so we have like 30, 40 people on the mats over at Forza Combat Sports, you know, on our busy nights. And it's been great over there. And training came together. And me and coach came together really well. And I've had Costa for a whole 12 weeks. You know, last time we had a – opponent change go from a ranked opponent to a non-ranked opponent and then now we've had cost the whole camp and uh it's looking good and we fly out in a couple days and i'm ready to go who you bring in uh with you to be in your corner uh sink three my coach uh my best friend and my father how is that having your father in your corner because that would stress me out uh, well, now it means a lot because I missed having my father there for like a few fights. My dad was in every corner for every fight. Didn't matter if I boxed, kickboxed, did jujitsu. He was always there. And we had a little falling out. And I had like four or five fights where my father wasn't there at all no more, you know, so not even watching. So to have him there, it means a lot. And it'd be a, mean a lot more to go get this win with Father's Day being the next day, you know, and it'd be, you know, our first win together in the octagon. I didn't even think about Father's Day being the following day. That's like a perfect story. Was he in your corner for the uh, Charles Johnson fight? Yes, that was the first fight he was back, but not for the flying triangle with Cody Dirty. That was, man, that was a good one. <laughs> that was yeah. a good one. And I, I know a big motivation for you is being a father yourself, right? You told me before you, you fight for your, for your family, for your daughters. And I want to ask, did they watch that Charles Johnson fight? And I, even if they didn't, I know they know you lost. So like, what was their reaction to that? Yeah, they did watch it. Um, they watched it uh, with their mother and stuff. She took them to watch it. And uh, they were good, you know. I, my littlest one, she's six now. She was a little worried because of the blood, you know. And my oldest, you know, she told me I was doing good and I almost had him, you know, and just lost position because she's more involved, you know, and understands a little more. And, you know, and – like I told him at the end of the day, I, I'm out there doing what I love in front of millions of people, you know, I can't win them all. That's the plan, you know, and that's what I want to prove to them. It don't matter. Even if I lose, I'm going to keep my head up high. I'm going to get back at it. I'm not going to give up. I made it there, you know, and the hardest part is not making it there. Really. It's staying there, you know? And so that's now that's the plan is to stay there. So they're going to be tuning in for this one too. Most definitely. That's awesome, man. I love that. And I love how like mature they are too. Like, I don't know, a six year old kid watching their parent fight and having a reaction like that. That's awesome, man. That goes to show you're a great father. Yeah. And they come to the gym, you know, and they've seen me spar and train, you know, so they're there at, and that kind of, you know, warmed them up to it. My oldest got to watch me fight live one time. And that was amazing, you know, and then, you know, it just lit a fire under me right 
when I come out and I see her right there next to my corner, you know, when I'm making the walk, you know, so that's what kids do. They motivate us, man. And uh, I'm motivated for this one. Like I said, had a good camp and uh, now it's just cutting the last little bit of weight and showing up to Vegas to beat somebody up. And 2023, we're about halfway through the year now. You want to stay busy? You want to get more fights in? Yeah, man, if everything goes good. I got one fight left on my contract, and I would like to finish it out at the end of the year and then, you know, hopefully get that new contract, you know? Yeah, man, love it. Um, And I know a big part, well, not a big part, but I know you're a fan of the sport as well as being an athlete, and you always post your picks on Instagram. You're involved in every fight, so I want to ask you a couple questions about your card because main event, pretty killer. Marvin Vittori, Jared Cannonier, who's taking that one? Man, that's a tough one, man, because uh, Marvin wasn't very impressive in his last fight. A lot of people were disappointed in it, you know, and Cantonier, same thing, you know, not like too impressive, but, you know, he, he's he's solid, man. I mean, went five rounds with Izzy, you know, and uh, the like I said, him in a Strickland fight was kind of, you know, blah, but. You know, that so that's a tough one. I think if Marvin brings it and get the takedown, then Marvin. But, uh, I mean, that's a toss-up, man. I think it's a great fight, man. Uh, but there's not, like, a lot of big names, you know, on the card, which is good and bad because, like, that makes, like, a lot of people say, oh, there's not a lot of big names. Yeah, but then that makes usually for a lot of fire fights, yeah. you know. And right now it's looking like I'm pretty high up on the prelim card, so I'm hoping it stays that way, you know maybe slide in, take that main prelim slot. That'd be cool. You know, like I'm looking up for always stuff to just excite, to get my name out there and, you know, to pop. And I think Saturday night, you know, if everything comes together the way it did in camp, I think I will perform the way I want to perform and come out with a great performance. I mean, you're one of the most exciting flyweights there is hands down. Like you said, flying triangles and shit like that. Pretty, pretty hard to come by. Um, and the co-main event, for your card. That's a fight I don't really understand. Uh Armin Suzuki and versus Joaquim Silva. How do you think that one goes down? Yeah, I don't it's a good one, man. I think they match up well, you know, and uh like you said it's not a huge co-main event, but uh it's a good one. And uh I I mean honestly, I don't even know cuz any Silva that you put out there, you know, they can always shock anybody, you know. Famous <laughs> and, name. And I can't pronounce the other dude's name, but uh, he's a killer, right? Like, it, yeah, Suzuki's bad, dude. Yeah, so I mean, I'm excited. I don't care, man. I just love to fight, man, and I try not to fanboy out when I'm there because I'm there to fight. You know, like most of the time, I don't take pictures if I run into anybody famous at the PI. The only person I took a picture with last time, and that was uh, Gordon Ryan, and then, you know, and he's the jiu-jitsu guy, the so, king right there. Outside of that. Yeah, so usually most of the time I, I'm there for business, you know, and that's what I'm doing. I'm on a business trip. I'm going to take care of business and do my job and, you know, I'll keep my job and, you know, keep doing what I love to do. Man, it's it's hard as a media member sometimes to be there in person and be like, oh, my God, I just talked to, you know, Sean O'Malley. It's, it's hard not to geek out sometimes. You guys are awesome. And it's like the reason I got into the sport in the first place, you know, so working there. It's not always easy. Um, and a big fight coming yeah. up. Yeah, for real. A big fight coming up, though. And this is, you know, the top of your division. I have to ask you, Brandon Moreno, Alexander Pantoja. What a fight. How's that rematch go down? Man, I like I said, somebody else asked me about this fight. And I just, I feel like it's one of those fights where Pantoja just has Brandon's number. You know, like you he is that much better than Pantoja or Pantoja is just that much better, you know, I don't know. And I think it's going to happen again. He, he's beat him twice and it's both by decision, you know, and I think it's going to be the same thing. I think he knows what Brandon brings to the table and he's very confident in this matchup and he's always been the gatekeeper of the top five. He just couldn't get that title, and I think this is his opportunity. But, I mean, like I said, Brandon's a beast, though. I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Brandon does pull off something and does win, but I think Pantoja is going to get it. 
I'm excited for that one. I know you have your eyes on it because, well, you'll probably be there soon yourself someday. And my last question yeah. for you, Jimmy, before we get out of here, last night, I'm sure you heard the news. I'm sure you watched. Amanda Nunes retired, the GOAT of women's MMA. How do you feel about that, man? Do you like look up to her at all? Because, you know, from as a fan perspective, the GOAT, like simply put. Oh, yeah, because if you watch Amanda in early in her career, you know, she had a little battle there for a while, you mm-hmm. know, and and then out of nowhere, she just started plummeting and then bow and then got to Ronda and destroyed Ronda, Mishi Tate. And, and then it was just so on, you know, and she's what made the women's featherweight division. And it's already they already basically said now it's gone, you know, because <laughs> she retired. And to be honest, I think it's awesome. And it's like the biggest slap to the face to Pena that she could have done, you know, like, cause it's not her fault. Pena pulled out of the fight, you know, and Pena want to act like she's running and retired. Like, no, you had an opportunity and you got hurt. That's not her fault. She wants to go live her life and have kids and do what she wants to do. She's more than welcome to do that. She signed a date for, you know, to fight you. You didn't fight. So she fought Adonna. Now the fight too too amazing but she dominated and she won and you know and not to go out that way you know on top and i'm glad she did and you know and i think it's awesome and yeah i love amanda yeah amanda she's awesome man and i'm sure you saw some of juliana's tweets afterwards a little bit a little bit silly uh maybe someday we'll get that trilogy but whatever and jimmy before we get out of here man a lot of eyes on your fight a lot of eyes on you many many fans of jimmy the brick flick so i just want to give you the opportunity is there anything you would like to say to everybody if so the mic is yours my man yeah man i appreciate everybody for the support i'm glad to be back again you know june 17th live on espn plus check me out follow my instagram at the brick mma you can follow me on facebook at jimmy the brick flick that's my fan page and on Twitter at Jimmy Flick. Oh, shit. I'm even on TikTok at the Brick mm-hmm. MMA. I'm not very often, but I've been trying, doing a little bit here and there. I appreciate all my sponsors for the support, everybody that's helped me get back. And June 17th, I'm going to go put on a show. I mean, that was about as good as a closer outro as I can do, so I'm not going to say much here. Jimmy the Brick Flick, June 17th, UFC Vegas 75. Thank you so much, my man, and kick ass, all right? Yes, sir. I appreciate you, big dog.